In 1988, the Writers Guild of America went on strike for five months, resulting in a major delay of new content. Desperate for pretty much anything that wasn't reruns of Airwolf, various network affiliates and TV stations aired American Gladiators, a TV show in which large men and women beat the piss out of smaller contestants with big Q-tips, giant metal spheres, and a tennis ball gun. In 2007 and 2008, the writers went on strike again, and again, networks turned to those beefy broads and buff bros to fill airtime. And in 2023, we've got another writer's strike. It's been going now since May. It's September, and as I write this, there's no end in sight. What I'm trying to tell you, writers, is that every time you go on strike, an amateur athlete who peaked in high school gets CTE or a torn ACL, courtesy of a man named after an explosive. Is that really what you want? Can you live with that blood on your hands? All right, so let's talk about this whole thing. The actors' unions join the writers in July, and so basically everything is shut down. Essentially, no new TV shows or movies are being made. Anything coming out right now was already made, which is why you're seeing so many delays. Like, Dune 2 was supposed to come out in October, then they moved it to March of next year. That's not because, oh, we can't promote it. Like if the success or failure of your film hinges on whether or not Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya can sit on a fucking couch beside Jimmy Fallon in 2023, you fucked up. No. They're doing it to ration their reserves, so that next year, Warner Brothers executives aren't sitting in a shareholders meeting with their dick in their hands saying, Uh, well, um, we had nothing else to release last quarter, so uh, we made no money. Whoopsie daisy. But here's the thing. You've got knobs like Cat Turd on Twitter saying shit like, Funny how Hollywood shut down weeks ago and my life hasn't changed one bit. It's almost like they don't matter. And well, that's mostly because Cat Turd is a terminally online loser who has never had a single moment of joy in his life that wasn't at the expense of another human being, a 60-year-old man who cries every week about not getting enough views on his tweets. And even though it's absurd to think that a few months of strikes would have resulted in anyone's life changing, it is true that, for the most part, the world has changed significantly since the last two writers' strikes, and its impact on entertainment will be very different this time round. In 88, for example, there were nine shows that averaged over 20 million viewers a week. And in fact, the entire top 30 averaged over 16 million viewers a week. In 2008, only nine shows passed the 10 million mark. And three of them were just different days of Dancing with the Stars counted separately for some reason. In 2022, it would appear that only three shows made it over the 10 million viewer hump. And two of those are football. People don't watch network TV as much. The ones that do still watch TV and movies, and we'll get to the ones that don't in a few minutes, they've all moved on to streaming. And streaming plays by entirely different rules. And this is a huge part of the reason why they're striking. In 2008, Netflix just barely existed, and it was mostly a bunch of asylum films like Three Assed Mega Shark vs. Eight Finger Octo Primer or whatever. And in 1988, of course, it was the Dark Ages, where if you wanted to watch reruns of Miami Vice, you had to wait until it was on at 6 p.m. on Channel 5 or whatever, and you didn't get to choose an episode. You watched what they fucking gave you, and you liked it. Now, you can watch effectively whatever you want, whenever you want. And this is a problem for the writers and actors. See, one of the big things the unions want is for the streaming services to pay them something called residuals. With old network TV, every time a show aired, the stars and the writers all got something. It was pennies, but they all added up over the years. All of these contracts, though, were written before Netflix, Disney+, Plus, HBO Max, Paramount+, Plus, Amazon, whatever, and they've all basically said, find where it says streaming in your contracts. Huh. Oh, it doesn't? Tough titties, I guess. We ain't paying you for some depressed loser watching The Office again for the 30th time through. I believe this is a huge challenge for getting the general public on the union side. Like, there was this story recently. Aaron Paul claims he makes zero dollars from Breaking Bad streaming on Netflix. And then, someone community noted it to say that Aaron Paul was paid millions by AMC, and that AMC got paid by Netflix for the show, so Netflix doesn't owe anyone shit. And then, people got angry about the community note. But, like, uh, I don't know, man. Like, there's no other job where you get that. 
The average person can't truly sympathize. Do you get paid for work you did five weeks, five months, five years, five decades ago? Of course you don't. I know I don't. My voice is played in like 500 bowling alleys in the US every single day. I recorded that shit 10 years ago. I get nothing from it. That's life. Imagine if a plumber was like, Hey, yo, listen, yeah, I'll install the pipes in this building, but I want a fucking dollar for every turd that runs through these babies. You get a guy in here with IBS, you'll be smelling his ass, I'll be smelling your cash. I bet they'd love that, but that's just not reality. So, I totally understand why the average person thinks, fuck these guys, they got paid, why do they need more? Want more? Go do another show. If I want more money, I gotta go to work tomorrow. Why the fuck should it be any different for you? But, on the other side, you want all that money to go to the studios instead? Like, here's a story for you. Warner Brothers says they'll see somewhere between $300 million and $500 million in losses for this. Meanwhile, the Writers Guild estimates that WB would have to pay an extra $47 million to the writers to meet their demands. They can afford to lose $500 million in a year, but not $47 million? This reminds me of my old pro athletes make too much or do they video. On one hand, yes, again, hard to sympathize with millionaires or even people making a living when they make TV shows and movies for a living and your job fucking sucks. But on the other hand, why should a bunch of executives get all that money? They don't make shit. Netflix's CEOs, plural, they need two for some reason, try to give themselves each a $30 million bonus this year. Had the balls to try and do it during the strike. But what do they create? Nothing. They bought Squid Game for a fucking song, gave the creator a plate of bulgogi, told him to eat it and beat it. Meanwhile, it was the most streamed show on their service. Give that guy $30 million, and give Netflix's CEOs a fucking kick in the ass in their $3 million salary, oh, I know, only $3 million, and tell them, what, is that not enough, you greedy hogs? Need more slop, do you, piggies? And young people kind of don't give a fuck either way. In 2004, a poll was done that said that 20% of people got their news from late night shows like The Daily Show or Letterman and Conan monologue, shit like that. Now, Twitter exists. Or X, I guess I really should respect its right to be called whatever it wants, but anyway. Every person on social media has seen 300 jokes about literally every pop culture moment hours before Colbert or Seth go on the air. They've been made obsolete. I think this is why they're trying to pull video game companies into it as well. They know the kids love those. SAG-AFTRA, the Actors Union, is going to vote to strike against EA, Activision, Epic, Take-Two, WB, which could mean no union actors providing voiceover for games. And while you might say, good, you have to remember, video game voice actors join those unions too. Yeah. I know, you don't want Peter Dinklage ever going near a video game ever again. Warranted. But I would bet that Troy Baker, Nolan North, and yes, even the internet's beloved Charles Martinet are in the union. But again, young people still won't care. They've got Twitch, YouTube, TikTok, hours upon hours of endless content made for free by people who are just happy to get a fucking dollar. Or five? Support the habit at patreon.com slash dose to Buckley. They don't care. You know when they do care, though? When someone threatens to scab. Both Drew Barrymore and Bill Maher announced that they were going to start their shows back up again. Faced a bunch of social media backlash. And then went, uh, on second thought, uh, we, uh, support the writers. Yeah. Barrymore did a YouTuber apology video and then immediately took it down. And I assume Bill Maher cackled his statement in between introducing Tales from the Crypt. I don't know, I think there's an upside to bringing the shows back. There are more staff than just writers. All the other production staff are sitting at home with their thumbs up their ass not getting paid as well. And if the show's running, it's making money. How hard would it have been for Drew and Bill to say, Hey, I'm bringing back the show, and the money it generates, we'll be saving and giving it to the writers. Done. Now you've appeased all the complainers who weren't even watching your show anyway. 
Drew's show draws about 1.2 million viewers a show, and Bill gets like 800,000. If you hadn't said anything, who would have known you were back anyway? So, as of writing this, everyone went back to the negotiating table on September 20th. And I hope they figure it out, because I'm old. I do care. I like professionally created, well-written, scripted content. I want more of that. You guys know I don't really like unions, but I do want an ending to Across the Spider-Verse and a third season of The Bear and Yellow Jackets. So, I hope they figure it out. Because otherwise, can you imagine a future where there is no professional content anymore? Your only entertainment choices are Mr. Beast, people playing video games, 10 second clips of people hurting themselves, vultures watching clips of people hurting themselves and other people playing video games, and some asshole who makes videos mocking all those videos? That's a bleaker future than any union writer could ever come up with. Hmm, actually, I'm not part of the union. <laughs> Be right back. Gotta go sell something to Netflix. And if that doesn't work, maybe I can sell them some American gladiators.